Venezuela, April 2002. It's a drama with a cost of thousands. Which is almost surrealistic, the things that happen, you know. This cannot be true. There's a tree violence. We're here for the president, and they're shooting at us. Three presidents in two decades. Chavez from Pepper. Chavez is a soap opera character. Hugo Chavez, elected president, upset the rich. Time for a military coup then, and Washington's keen to help. It's a soap opera, but with real blood. In Venezuela, it seems you can't escape from soaps. In a country of illiterate, television matters. It's popular escapism every night. But the biggest personality on Venezuelan TV is the president, Hugo Chavez. He's got his own phoning show. It lasts as long as he wants. The record's seven hours non-stop. It's the perfect platform for Chavez to show himself as an ally of change in a country in urgent need of it. His message is that, though a soldier, he's a revolutionary too. Though democratically elected, he's still very much a military man. <coughs> His show features Chavez playing saviour to Venezuela's poor. As a strong believer in Latin values, he plays to his own agenda and not Washington's. A visit to Saddam Hussein is proudly shown to viewers, as is a trip to his mentor, Fidel Castro, for a game of baseball. One day in April 2002, as Venezuelans settled down to their fill of television romance, they got more drama than they bargained for. Their viewing was rudely interrupted. Chavez took over all the channels to show how he wanted the country run. Live, on air, he sacked the heads of the state oil company one by one. Chavez, with his radical rhetoric on how society needed reform, wasn't popular with the moguls who control all but one of the six TV channels. In a period of 48 hours, he was on the earth 35 times with different programs that had to be transmitted by all the channels. What do what you call that in, in, in Europe? What do you call that any place in the world? That's a dictatorship. Offside. He just fired the 10 top guys from the oil industry on a TV program. People couldn't accept that. They couldn't accept that politicians were going to be in charge of our main industry. With the biggest energy reserves in the Western Hemisphere, Venezuela lives off oil. It's the third biggest supplier to the US, increasingly important as crises stalk the Middle East. By intervening in the state oil company and threatening to raid its oil revenues to fund his revolution, Chavez had gone too far. Outraged, the opposition called a general strike, announced by Venezuela's leading businessman, Pedro Carmona. Led by the head of the Chambers of Commerce, this was no ordinary strike. Workers were protesting at the sacking of their bosses. The marchers were those with a stake in society, the rich, the comfortable, and better paid workers with steady jobs. Their aim was simple, to bring down President Chavez. He, he should resign, nobody loves him. He wants us to become a Cuba. He wants this to become a communist, there is no doubt about it. But by no means I'm a person that would be going out to the streets and shouting and screaming and asking for, you know, rights. I was a... Uh, um, in favor of that strike, I must say. I thought it was uh, a sacrifice we need to pay in order to get heard. And if, I, if, I, if that required me to go out in the street, I, I also did it because I felt we all needed to be supportive of each other. If I was the only one, I mean, if other people went out and I wasn't there, I would feel very bad. In this third world country, people like Adriana live as they would in Miami. They cruise along on oil money, and she can afford to shop 
in Latin America's biggest and most luxurious mall. The status quo has been very good to her and her friends, and she didn't want any country boy in uniform like Chavez to spoil it. Me pego un 